All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So happy Financial Literacy Month. We are so excited that you all are entering this afternoon's event called Salary Negotiation, Knowing Your Worth. This is the first webinar series to kick off Financial Literacy Month. So I'm super excited. We're going to talk about money and how money works. Um, and today I have a great speaker that I'm going to introduce to you in just a second. So first, who am I? My name is Tierra Bird, and I am the Assistant Director, Director of Career and Personal Development with VCU, Office of Alumni Relations. And also, I'm going to go over a couple of housekeeping points. So this entire webinar, the entire ser series will be recorded. So if you joined a little late, if you missed something, you will be able to view this again. The recording will be available. If you are in need of live closed captioning, please message the VCU alumni chat box, okay? So if you submitted questions prior to coming to this presentation today, we will get to your questions at the end of the presentation. Um, our goal is to get to as many questions as possible. And we wanna make sure that we are respectful of everyone's time, all right? Throughout the presentation, if you have questions, you can put them in the Q&A. Um, and we will get to them at the end of the presentation as well. All right, so I'm going to introduce our speaker for today. Monica Van Arsdale is the Senior Financial Success Educator for grades 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, as well as young adults for Virginia Credit Union. Monica brings a refreshing, honest, and relatable voice to money management. With over 15 years of personal financial education experience, Monica meets people wherever they are on their financial journey. As a former public school teacher and lifelong Virginia resident, Monica is committed to helping the Richmond community build a brighter tomorrow. When she's not helping people live more confidently, Monica enjoys spending time with her family and volunteering at festivals around town. Monica, take it away. We are excited to hear you talk today and I'm gonna be taking notes. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tara, for having me today. Um, yeah, I, I have been in the industry of um, helping people feel more financially confident for over 15 years. And I'm really excited to talk to you all today about salary negotiation. Um, we, I always start my presentations asking about how people feel about money and is money good or bad? And the truth is, is that money has a like really big power. It has the power to make us happy. It has the power to make us sad. It has the power to bring us to our wildest dreams. So let's talk about today, the point, salary negotiation and knowing your worth. Carrie Fisher said, everything is negotiable. Whether or not the negotiation is easy is another thing. And I, I think the second part of this, whether it's easy or not, is another thing. It is a barrier. Um, and we really need to learn to break that barrier and open up that line of communication and normalize the process. And so today, I'm going to be giving you all helpful hints, tips to make sure that you are really ready to go in and get the raise that you deserve. So what are we going to learn? There's four parts to today. We're going to start why ask for a raise. And then part two is when is a good time? Part three, how do we prepare? And then we're going to talk about practicing and making, making things perfect. All right. Feel free to put things in the chat um, and, and to participate. I, I, I love that. And um, it'll make for a richer session. So first things first, we're going to talk about why we ask for a raise. Why ask for a raise? So some of you are already here because you are feeling like you are deserving of a raise. You are um, empowered. Maybe you're feeling undervalued. So we need to really put this in writing. All right. And, and really understand why the salary negotiation process is so important and that it needs to be a part of our regular routine as, as a worker. Um, when you are budgeting, there's two factors to your cash flow. You have income and expenses. And when things get tight, we tend to just cut back on our expenses and kind of forget that other part of the equation, which is our income. Sometimes we need 50% of the equation, we need to better our income. 
The short-term benefits of increasing our income is you can save more money and pay down existing debts, all right? That relief of being able to get that debt off of us, I saw in the chat, some of us are more recent grads. And so some of us are maybe feeling that, um, that student loan debt or even just the car loan. When we're able to pay down those expenses, we can then free up money to do other things, such as increase our savings and look towards our long run benefits, um, such as and, and our long run financial goals of uh, buying a house, buying a car, going on that dream vacation, the things that are going to make us and give us that feeling of satisfaction um, and live, make us live a little bit more confidently. Um, Financial health data just right now reports that 66% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and so that is staggering. We really need to start this savings goal. Um, currently, uh, our savings in the United States is between six and 8%. And if we're able to increase our income, then we're going to be able to put more towards our savings. And uh, give us a little cushion when things get tight or if we really wanna treat ourselves. So let's run the numbers. Uh, I, I, I love numbers and I think that numbers speak volume. So um, what is the impact if you are, um, if your current salary is 58,200? All right, so what we did, this is just, I just put that salary in. And this is the difference of getting a 3% raise versus a 10% raise versus a 15% raise this year. And then systematically, I just added an additional 3%, like on average companies have like a raise of three to 5% each year. So that's where those numbers came from. So the 3% is conservative. And as you can see down here, a 10% raise, you would have almost $22,000 more. $22,000 more in, in five years if you were to advocate for yourself and able to get that 10% raise. That's a new car. And if you did 15%, it'd be over $37,000 more. So the numbers don't lie. And, and, and it's, it's huge. $37,000 more in the next five years. That could be that long-term goal of having a down payment for a house. Um, so it, it, the numbers make sense. Um, even more so, I, I would be upset if I didn't bring this up. We are facing inflation. We're facing inflationary times and we have rising expenses. So let's look at the numbers and consider our, an increase in our expenses. Um, you can see right here, average U.S. household expenses. This is according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And um, so this is the different size household, one versus two person household versus three person household, four person household and five person household. Um, and only uh, 2021 monthly expenditures had been reported. So I went ahead and in this column, I added the 8% 2022 inflation. And so this also, you go think about your current salary and go, okay, where am I in the average um, how much income am I making? And, and, and is this going just with our basis expenditure report, am I making enough on average to buy the things I need? Um, I, I took it a step further looking at this slide and I also added the 20%. It suggested that you do save 10 to 20%, as I mentioned earlier. And so one person household that brings you over $50,000, two person household that brings you from $75,000 of expenditures on average, plus the 20%. Um, and so you can see right here, just what we need. Inflation is affecting us. Um, and we wanna make sure that we are um, preparing for it and that we know um, where we stand with society. I think that's important. All right, part two of our conversation today is, um, so hopefully right now you're like, I really do need to work on my salary negotiation. If you weren't already feeling that way, hopefully with those numbers, you're feeling a little bit more equipped and you're like, oh, this is important. So let's get into some of the meat. Um, when is a good time? Because really initiating it can be a little tricky. 
So when you're getting into thinking about timing and you know that you're feeling undervalued and you know that you want to bring it up, you need to consider how long has it been since your last advancement. Um, and so never negotiate salary as a, as a rule within six months of a new role or a new job in your company. Um, otherwise, they're going to be like, you know, you just got an advancement. So at least six months before you bring it up. Um, also ask yourself, can you wait until your annual review? Your annual review is a great time to bring up salary negotiation. At that point, they're renewing contracts um, and, and things just kind of line up a little bit easier between you and your supervisor for that to happen with the process of increasing your wage. Now, it's easy to think about you wanting more money and you deserving more money but you do have to consider your company. So has your company recently reported above average earnings? How are they doing? Um, did you just finish a large project that is you know, getting some, some press? Um, did you take on any new responsibilities um, within your company um, that could warrant a raise? So do consider all of these. All of these things um, are, are going to be leverage for you um, and the leverage that you're going to need for the negotiation. All right. So you considered those things and now you need to think about the details of setting up the meeting. Um, when you go to set up a meeting, um, obviously the annual review is great, um, and but you want to consider the time of day and day of week. Experts suggest midweek, midday is the best time, but you know your boss and you know when they're in the best mood. You want them to be in the best mood. So is it morning? Is it afternoon? Um, consider whether or not there, is your boss right now overwhelmed with a big project or is there maybe their home life, you know, weighing on them? You don't want to be another task for them in this process. So timing is, is, is huge. Um, discussing in person is ideal. Um, this is not a phone conversation. It needs to be um, a, a, a quick email to initiate the meeting. Um, virtual call is fine as long as that is your normal means of communication. I know many of us are now working remotely. And so that might be something that, um, that you need to do with your boss in order to have this conversation. Um, but the key in all of this is to have your boss's full attention, all right? You want them to be able to listen, absorb, comprehend um, everything that you do, and, and, and you want them to be able to act on it. So um, right here is an example of an email to initiate a meeting if one isn't already on the calendar. I, I think sometimes... Just like, what do I say? You know, it doesn't need to be long. This is short. It's a subject line, meeting request. And then, good morning. I hope you're doing well. I'm reaching out to set up a 30-minute meeting. All right, 30 minutes is the maximum you need to talk about this. All right, bring it up. Make it short, sweet for your case. And so 30 minutes is, is your time frame. And let them know that you want to talk about compensation. You never want to throw a curveball at them and just come to a meeting and say, oh, yeah, by the way, I want to raise. Um, give them time to absorb and really think about it on their end as well. And then insert your availability. Look at there. If you have access to your supervisor's calendar, um, try to find something that aligns where you know that they already have availability. And then open to looking to the following week and, and keep it conversational. Keep it open. Keep it approachable. Um, and so hopefully this is helpful as well right here. Um, next up, part three. Okay, so you have your meeting, you've done your timing. This is where you really build your case. And this is what, so this part is, is key. Um, it's game time, all right? You have your meeting, you need to focus on preparation for the conversation, and that means homework. Okay, so first assignment, is to know the average pay for someone in your career path and in your geographical area. So do consider your geographical location as well. And while you're doing this, uh, research, analyze, and ask yourself, where does my salary land in comparison with others? Uh, how experienced or senior are you? Um, is there bargaining power? So you know, be objective in the, in, in the consideration and say, do I have 
do I have bargaining power here? One thing you don't want to do here is ask other people in your office how much they make. All right, avoid the inner office conversations. Um, the reason being is because this this could cause all of a sudden a you know a, a movement of people all wanting um, pay increases and then result in no one getting one. So, um, is there bargaining power? Keep it to yourself. This is your assignment number one. Um, a great website to look up your salary is Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, specifically, moving in, go to BLS slash BLS wage. Um, so I, I do suggest this website, and I'd be happy to, at the end of the um, recording to walk you all through it so that you guys are able um, to see how this works. Um, but it's very helpful. Um, there are other websites out there. Out there, salary.com is, is helpful as well. Um, there's a pay scale. So do your research and, and look up about how much money should you be making. Second assignment, you got to review your company's policies, um, their incentive plans and their current job description, your current job description. Know what your salary range is. So are you already at the cap? Are you at the ceiling of your job description? Um, it kind of gets messy. If you're at the top of your job description in your salary range, then what you're going to be asking for is a restructuring of, of, of the career HR department's you know, hierarchy. And that can be a lot and a, a big ask. So um, also look at the company policies, um, incentive plans. Um, is there room in the budget for your company for a raise? So is, is there money budgeted? Are you approaching the pay grade ceiling, as I said? And is there already a merit-based system in place where each year, maybe you don't get a giant lump sum now, but each year you're able to maximize um, that, that merit-based system and maximize to the highest percentage and hopefully get over that 3% 3 3 systematic or 4% systematic raise that everyone gets. So ask yourself these and, and know the answers before you go into the meeting. Um, the third assignment is consider the cost of living. Okay, this is for you. This is not for you to bring up in your meeting, but this is a good assignment for you to be able to say, hey, this is how much I'm currently making. This is also my, what my expenses are. Am I making it work? Am I getting by with these? Um, so it's, 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 it's anybody have a guess on how many Americans um, actually, what percentage of Americans budget? You can write it in the chat. Sorry, I haven't been looking at the chat. What percentage would you guys guess of Americans actually budget and look at their expenses and their income? Anybody? Okay, 5%, 20%. It's a little higher than that. Uh, 30%, okay. 30%, it's actually 35%. So you all are right on point. 35% um, of Americans budget. And I don't think it's any surprise for us to also know that 66% of Americans are considered financially vulnerable or financially coping because they don't have that control over their budget. This part of the assignment is, is important for you to do regardless on a monthly basis. Um, but it also tells you if you are spending any extra money for your work, you know, how much are you spending on your commute? Is there a toll booth expense? These things add up. And these are things that you should be including and thinking about in your compensation and also maybe even considering in your leverage for maybe asking for um, your, your travel to be paid for or some sort of compensation for your travel. So that's assignment three. Um, and, and it's always good to do a budget. So I think and I think in a couple of weeks, you all have a um, seminar on budgeting. So that will be super helpful with um, organizing all of that. So this next part is, so you've done your three assignments. You've done the average pay. So you know how much people make in your field. 
you know the company's policies, so you know where they stand, and you've done your budget, and so you can see where you're at and how much you need in order to get by and really try to get that 20% savings goal. And if any of your company is costing you extra money. Um, now it's time to really build your case, all right? Hopefully by now you have a smile file. Uh, I personally have a folder in my work uh, email. And anytime I get a thank you email or I get a email from somebody about a big project that they're excited about um, and, and or that's gone well, I slide that email into my smile file. It's called happy emails. And I, I keep note of it. I track it. This is important because this is your leverage. A smile file is kind of like a, it's your work resume for each year, all right? And so um, it's all of your accomplishments. If, um, so consider any big projects you've been a part of, awards you've gotten. Um, maybe you've gone back to school, VCU alumni, and, and you've attained a new certification or a degree. Um, so consider these and add these up in your smile file throughout the year. All right. The second part of this building your case, and this is key to make your boss say yes, is go, okay, because of this project, this is what happened. You have to relate the value of your smile file to the successes of the company. How have what you've done enhanced and improved the company's reputation um, how, or, or maybe even their revenue? Um, so that is going to be um, your leverage, that I am worth more, all right? Um, and you're not just saying it, right here, you're proving it. So if you can quantify this, that's great. Um, also, when you're getting into your, com your conversation with your boss and you're preparing for it, you have to think about the bigger picture. Your supervisor is going to want to know that you have career goals 10 to 15 years from now and that you are going to continue to be an asset to the company, that you are a long-term investment. And so um, consider the big picture. Right now, where do you want to be and where do you see yourself down the, role, the road within your company? Um, it could be a promotion. It could be um, looking at maybe a different area, a different department, um, managerial aspects. But make sure you have that in mind because you want to let your boss know that you're thinking about that. Um, also, consider volu volunteering and taking on new responsibilities for the company. Um, I know within our company at Virginia Credit Union, we have lots of community relationship opportunities. Um, and so the volunteering is shows your boss that you're willing to go the extra mile and help with the branding of the company um, and that you're also a team player and that you're going to help out when help is needed. So consider all of these things and build your case. I um, right here just created a very quick smile file a sample layout. Um, and so it, it doesn't need to be elaborate. Just put the date, your accomplishment, and then right here, the company impact. And I think when you're thinking about your verbiage and your delivery to your boss, you say, I accomplished this. And as a result, this is how it helped our company. And this could be even when you're doing your yearly goals how and you've met your goals or exceeded your goals what percentage did you exceed your goals by um or met meet your goal by um and how did this help the company that's the extra step so hopefully this layout right here helps you kind of see um the process it does not need to be elaborate um and hopefully this bring, breaks down the barriers but the smile file is super important now, all of those things said, you've built your case, you have your file. Um, unfortunately, that's, that's not everything. Your delivery and the way you communicate with your superior is essential. It's essential. 
Um, this is a negotiation, not an ultimatum. Okay. So you don't want to make them feel like if not, if they, you don't get this, you're leaving. All right. That's not a good, um, a lasting impression you want to leave with them. This is a negotiation. This is a conversation. You are in a contract to do a job for compensation. And it's something we should talk about. Um, so when you go in, have a salary range in mind, but give them first dibs at the offer. All right. So give them first dibs at the offer. Let them bring something to the table. Um, it might be more than what you were thinking. So that would be great. Um, and if not, it would give you at least it's a starting point. Um, consider also uh, alternatives to pay um, before the meeting. Consider flexible flex time, paid time off, vacation time. Um, stock options are always great. Uh, remote working opportunities are just some of the alternatives to pay that you um, that you might want to consider for the meeting. All right, so got your smile file. You've done the company impact. Now we talked about delivery. And so finally, um, you need to practice. Practice makes perfect. It's essential, essential to practice. So preparation is key. Uh, first things first, when you go into the meeting, you want to have a pitch. Two to three sentences, have it rehearsed, ready to go. Here's a sample one for you all. Um, again, helping you find your words. Uh, thanks for agreeing to meet with me today to discuss my current compensation package. I love working here. So make sure you are expressing interest in the company. Um, and I can see myself growing within the company. For the last however many years you've been there, I have done this, 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 um, or I've been a part of this. And uh, for these reasons, I'd like to be considered for a pay raise. At this point, the ball's in their court and you just listen. There is, um, the, it, and, and listening is, is sometimes the hard part because you're like, oh, I got out that, that my pitch. Um, but let them speak first. And, and that might be a good opportunity at this point um, to maybe take some notes, have your pad of paper ready and, and, and jot down what they say um, and, and make sure that they see that you're listening and you're taking notes um, and think and try to prepare for what counters could pop up. Prepare for like, oh, nope, sorry, we can't do that. <laughs> or prepare for the congratulations. Yeah, we, we love, you have been so wonderful with our company. We'd like to give you this percent of a rate. So be prepared for both of those situations and, um, and know that you have to keep it cool. So don't act overly excited and zealous. Don't look like you are upset or angry. You need to be at this point, keeping yourself open, have an open mind and keeping the dialogue going. All right. That's the objective is to keep the dialogue going. And sometimes, you know, good or bad, we we may be a little overwhelmed with what we hear. Um, as a tip, um, it's always good to repeat what your boss said to them. Um, uh, rephrase it after they say, you say, so what, I'm, what I understand is that you're able to do this. Um, and while you're rephrasing it, that's going to help you process their response and also help you come up with a counter. So practice that rephrasing. Um, and, and no matter what, you got to keep it cool. You have to keep even framed. Um, you want to you, you want to be able to process what they're offering. Next, um, good or bad, um, and specifically if it is not what you wanted to hear. Um, have your handy smile file um, ready to give them. Um, this is slide it to them and just say, hey, um, I, I understand that your hands might be tied right now. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you had uh, a copy of everything I've been doing for the company. This is a takeaway. And at the very least, um, as it says right here, we'll leave them with something to think about after the meeting. And and that's, that's a good place to be, where they can see what you're doing, see that you did your homework, and see that you want 
to move and that you're invested in the company. So um, that is super, super important. Um, lastly, do a live practice with someone you trust. This is a family member, a friend, a mentor. Um, again, try to stay away from coworkers, avoid practicing with coworkers. Um, it might be just a little too close to home. Um, um, practice your negotiation. Um, in your negotiation, as far, like I mentioned before, keeping it cool. Be confident. Know your worth. You have it all written out. You've done so much for the company. Be persistent. You know, well, I have increased our revenue this year by $30,000. It would be great if I could get some of that. Um, so, but keep it approachable and flexible. You want this to be conversational a conversation um, and, and you don't want your supervisor to feel threatened. All right. So keys there is keep it um, and, and normalize the salary negotiation conversation. So that way, when it comes up in the future, it's not, it's not so intimidating for you or your, your superior. Um, as a practice script, because sometimes again, words, this, this is an, a nerve wracking, um, conversation to have, and it can be intimidating. So I put a link right here. LinkedIn um, has a great resource. It's called Three Killer Salary Negotiation Scripts. Um, they break it down on um, how long you've been with the company, if you are getting a new position. So if you're changing roles and how to negotiate that way. And so this can be really helpful for you um, seeing the script and also helping you prepare for that back and forth. Um, the preparation, like I said, will, will help you maintain your, your cool in, in the situation. So um, you can see a little script right here. I really enjoyed my time working at Global Marketing. Um, I've spent these last three years learning. This is, this is the pitch right here. Um, a click-through rate of 3%, and I'd like to discuss my salary range. So um, this can be really helpful. Oh, thank you for putting that in the chat. All right. So what's next after you have your practice script and um and, and you've done your homework and you've delivered all of this and you've talked to your boss i want you all to be prepared to not get the answer in the meeting sometimes your supervisor has to go up to their supervisor or go talk to hr before making this happen so be prepared to say hey i understand um i look forward to talking about this more in the future um, as a follow-up, you definitely want to send an email summarizing the key points from your discussion within the meeting um, and, and, and discussing your SMILE file and next steps moving forward. Um, as for expectations of when you could expect an answer, timelines are always great to establish in these situations. Um, maybe it would be at your in-or review. Maybe it could be at your um, next one-on-one. -on -one. So um, try to ask for a, a timeline. And then um, salary conversations um, should happen every year, all right? So this isn't something I know right now, many of us are just going through the motions and we're not advocating for ourselves. Um, but hopefully by initiating this first request and getting a yes or a no, we're, we're normalizing the conversation and making it approachable in the future and on the forefront of your supervisor's mind later on. All right, so um, make this year be that normalization conversation. And, and I hope that the information that I've shared with you today has helped you build your case and helped you feel a little bit more confident moving forward. Um, I think at this point, yeah, here's my information. I do work one-on-one, -on -one, but I think we can open up for questions um, so as a, I just a quick summary, um, ask for why ask for a raise. Hopefully you saw the numbers, you know, the big impact, even just a few percentage, um, points can get you, um, know, and think about timing. Um, think about preparing smile file and doing your homework and looking at the impact you have on the company. Um, those objective points that you make to your supervisor, and then, um, make sure you practice with your boss. All right, let's get into questions. This is this is this is awesome. Sorry to cross you. This was 
awesome. I was jotting down some notes. I thought this was amazing. You shared so many great tips. Um, for those of you, if you are here and you join late, just a reminder that this is being recorded. So if you want to view this again, you will have that option. Um, but this was amazing. So I hope you guys took notes. We have some great questions for you, um, Monica. And I'm just going to jump into the questions that we had from our um, registration list. And then also the questions that were asked in the chat, I did add them um, as well. So we will get to those as well. So the first question is, what is the best way to negotiate um, salary? And then how do you pivot from a role um, where a company does not negotiate? So what's the best way to initiate the negotiation of the salary? And I know you covered some of this in your presentation. And how do you pivot from a role where a company does not negotiate? I think, okay, so first off, the best way to initiate negotiating salary is really um, keeping an open mind. Know that your boss's hands might be tied. And so don't get go in there thinking this has to happen, all right? Be flexible with it um, and, and, send, and be conversational in your approach to setting up the meeting. Um, the second part, how do you pivot from the role where a company does not negotiate? This is this is hard. Um, I I know from experience um, where you're so invested in a company and and you love them so much um, that and you know you're not getting compensated for your value, um, but you also know that their hands are tied. Um, for your well being, um, you have to know when to walk away. Um, it's it's hard. It's hard, um, but pivoting from the role where a company does not negotiate is it, if it's if it's festering inside of you, then it's going to be best to know when to walk away. So I hope that's that's hard. It can be real hard. All right. And then also, here's another question. How often should you negotiate your salary? If you have been at the company for five years, and what about less than five years? Oh, uh, uh, every year, every year. Uh, um, negotiate your salary every year. Keep that smile file, that happy email folder, and just have that when you go to your annual review. Hopefully, your company has an annual review of some sort. Um, so, whether or not you've been in the company for five years or um, or one year. Uh, this should be something, a conversation that you bring up and just and just fight to get the most from um, what they're able to offer. Awesome. Thank you. And then next we have, how do you negotiate your salary when you're split between two departments? That's a great question. Okay. <laughs> so whoever asked this, you are probably already doing a lot. <laughs> you are. Sounds to, like to me, you're doing two jobs in one. Um, so, so I think it's really up to you, whichever super, if you're, if you're reporting to two different su supervisors, um, maybe go to the supervisor that you're the most comfortable with, or the one that you would like to move with. As they move up the company, remember, let's consider our 10 to 15 year goals um, and, and put put your case out to them. So if you are split between two departments, um, try to advocate for yourself with, with whoever is going to make you feel the most comfortable in that negotiation situation and also who's going to empower you to to provide more opportunities for your career, for what your career path. All right. So thank you for that. Can you negotiate a larger increase above the company's standard raised ranges? Mm. <laughs> um, These are good. See, the, the one thing about that is that once you've reached the ceiling, what you're requesting is, is a restructuring. Of the company is um, the company is uh, your job title, your job description, um, whatever. Maybe if your company has a grade, you're asking them to do that. So, if you can, 
Um, absolutely, you can negotiate a larger increase above the company's um, standard rain, uh, raise ranges, um, but make sure that you are prepared for it to be a lengthy process. <laughs> and also take your job description and do the legwork for your supervisor and add to it you know, add to it what you're doing already um, and 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 consider changing your title to a senior or so doing the legwork and it almost <laughs> you're giving yourself the advancement um, and your supervisor will, will appreciate it because <laughs> it is a lot of work. Um, but once you hit the um, standard rate, uh, the negotiate larger increase. Once you've hit the ceiling, it is hard unless you create yourself a new job. I hope that answered it. All right. So we have another question. We have some really good questions. Um, are there tips on salary negotiation when getting a promotion? Um, tips on salary negotiation when getting a promotion. Okay. This is, I love this part because because if you're getting a promotion and you're entering into a new role, you have, you can play hardball. Um, you can really go to the table, go for your, what you would don't, you know, don't insult them, but do go above and beyond and really push. Um, at that point, they can come back to you with something lower and then you can counter that. Um so tips on salary negotiation when getting a promotion, um, let them make the first offer also too. I think that's also a, a give them the opportunity to put forth on the table um, and also pause. I It's so important that you pause and you give yourself 24 hours to, to think through what they've offered. Um, whether or not you're, you might be really excited about it, but give yourself time to pause and, um, and, and take it home, think it over. Cause you might out at the end of the day, be like, you know what? Yeah, this is, this is what I want that you don't want them to think that you're too excited and that there's giving you too much money. Cause then, then later on, when you ask for and an more, more of a raise, you're not going to get it. So, um, you're worth it. Um, so give yourself that time to pause. All right, let's go. All right. We have a few more, um, questions and the questions, if you're asking questions throughout the chat, we will get to that as well. Um, so the next question for you, Monica is aren't companies submitting financial forecasts prior to, prior to year end? Yes, they should be publicly. Okay. Um, especially, uh, or, or even within the company, they should, so you should have the data of how your company is doing, um, and, and be able to kind of thumb through it. I know sometimes it can be really, um, mundane to have to read through the company reports, but that will give you a good idea of whether or not your company is in a position, um, to, to give promotions. So, yes. All right. And then next we have how to address salary negotiation when moving from a paid internship to an employee. Oh, that's a good one. Well, at that point, as a paid internship intern, you probably already have a smile file. So that's you, you know, make your case. Um, and whenever you're 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 going for your first job, um and they advertise it for the company, you see the salary range. Um, shoot for the top of it, all right? Um, and and then, but make sure that you're able to say why. Because if they're gonna say, hey, if, if you're, the range of the salary is between 40 and 60,000, and you say, I would like to get $60,000 per year, their immediate question is going to be why. <laughs> why do you think you deserve to be at the top of the salary range for this position? So make sure you have, well, I've studied this. I've served on this board um, during my studies. I did this and this and this. So be able to answer that why question. Um, but if you're moving from an internship into a role within a company, um, just like you were going into any company, um, play cool and try to get the most. 
Awesome. We have a few more. Um, so a lot of companies have budget issues. Should we not try to negotiate salary if we are aware of this? That's a really good question. Um, I, I kind of want to follow that with like how egregious are the budget issues? Because for you, a budget issue also tells you as a employee that maybe the company might not be financially sound um, and, and provide you that security, that occupational security that might be something that you really value. Um, so budget, if you know that your company is having budget issues, it is a sensitive subject to bring up <laughs> during um, asking for a raise in the middle of that, especially if your supervisor is in the middle of the budget issues. Um, but that also, so you could approach it nicely, feel out the situation, um, but also if, the, if your company is facing budget issues, like severe budget issues, especially if you might already be needing to look for, for a, a new place. So, right. Thank you for that. Um, our next question um, is how would you suggest answering what salary do you want for a job interview to avoid getting underpaid? So when you are coming up with your salary, all right. And um, the, your, your, have a dream salary like this would be awesome this is this is what I, this would make me so happy and then have a fallback i'd be fine with that this this salary i'd still be really happy <laughs> so have two separate ranges um and so if they were to ask what salary do you want go in with your dream salary this what what salary cuz some some supervisors, even though you want to wait for them to make the first offer, they will kick it back on you. They will kick it back on you and and proceed with it. Like uh, my dream salary would be this amount. Remember, keep it within your salary range, whatever on your job description. So don't you know shoot the moon. Um, you you have to keep it practical and within the range that the company has already put in your job description. Um, but do go for the top, especially if they ask you. You know, um, and then they can come back and say, oh, well, we can only do this. And then hopefully you land somewhere in between the dream and the happy. <laughs> That's good. All right. And then next we have, how do you negotiate a salary if you had to previously take a decrease in salary when changing jobs? That's a great question. I think you have a lot of leverage there. Um, so if you've had to recently take a decrease in salary um, because of a, a role change, um, and now you're looking to just get back to where you are, um, making that a very transparent, honest conversation with your supervisor is good. I mean, they they they're gonna understand. They're gonna understand, and 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 they'll they're gonna want. Hopefully, um, your leadership is gonna want to get you back to where you were. But I will say that, um, you know, consider when you did, and this is a conversation that maybe we could have separately, but when you did take the decrease in salary, were you gaining other aspects of value to your life and to your, your, your job? So um, were you given more autonomy? Were you given more flexible schedule? So really weigh that. Um, and 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 th that's going to be up to you. But trying to get back to where you were, I think, is a completely rational um, thing to do, and, and, and something that you have every right to have a conversation with your supervisor about. Especially if you are bringing a lot of value to the company, still that is quantifiable. Awesome. All right. Did anyone have any additional questions that they wanted to add to the chat? Um, for Monica, while she is here, um, I'm happy that she put her contact information. So if you want to reach out to her after this presentation, um, you know, regarding salary negotiation, you guys can do that. But we do have a few more minutes. Um, if you have any questions for her here. Thank you all for coming on. Those were great questions.
Yeah. Um, we have a whole staff at Virginia Credit Union that's helped um, here to help. Um, if you have any further questions, like Tara said. Yeah, this was this was awesome. I hope you guys. Um, took a lot of notes. Hope you gained a lot of insight from the Q&A and from her great presentation. So I know we have about six minutes left, but if you all enjoyed today's conversation, we have three other webinars coming up this month um, on Wednesday. Um, each Wednesday of the month, we have three more webinars to kick off our Financial Literacy Month series. So there is a calendar um, which we've dropped in the chat. You guys can go on there and see what other webinars we have coming up. We'd love for you to join us, ask us questions. So we hope this is helpful for you. And if you all are interested in connecting with alum, or even if you're interested in sharing your knowledge to students and fellow alum, we encourage you to join our VCU Link platform, which is VCU's online community for connecting students, alumni, and friends of the university for career advice and industry contacts, as well as meaningful professional relationships. Follow us on social media, connect with us on VCU Link, join our other events that we have. Um, in 48 hours, you guys will receive a survey. And on that survey, we ask you guys to rate our events and also to list other events that you want to see us create for you all. And on behalf of VCU Alumni Relations, um, thank you so much, Monica, for making this presentation amazing. This was um, a lot of insight for all of us. Thank you so much to you and Virginia Credit Union um, for you sharing your time, your talents with us today. And I hope everyone has a great day. Go Rams, and we will talk soon.